Hey, welcome to Socialism for All. This file is being recorded for the November 2021 edition of Socialism for All. And it's an audiobook and discussion of Be Concerned with the Well-Being of the Masses, Pay Attention to Methods of Work by Mao Zedong from 1934. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe and consider supporting on Patreon. There's a link to Patreon in the video description. So, the editor's note from Marxists.org, which hosts this file, that's the Marxists Internet Archive, says, this was part of the concluding speech made by Comrade Mao Zedong at the Second National Congress of Workers and Peasants Representatives held in Juishin, Kiangxi Province, in January 1934. I'll just add that this is now seven years into the Chinese Civil War, which eventually concluded in 1949 with the Communists victorious. You can find more information about that background in earlier videos we've done of Mao or course, just generally online. So, let's get into the audiobook. There are two questions which comrades have failed to stress during the discussion, and which, I feel, should be dealt with. The first concerns the well-being of the masses. Our central task at present is to mobilize the broad masses to take part in the Revolutionary War, overthrow imperialism, and the Kuomintang, comment that's the nationalists they were fighting with, by means of such war spread the revolution throughout the country, and drive imperialism out of China. Anyone who does not attach enough importance to this central task is not a good revolutionary cadre. If our comrades really comprehend this task, and understand that the revolution must, at all costs, be spread throughout the country, then they should in no way neglect or underestimate the question of the immediate interests, the well-being of the broad masses. For the Revolutionary War is a war of the masses. It can be waged only by mobilizing the masses and relying on them. If we only mobilize the people to carry on the war and do nothing else, can we succeed in defeating the enemy? Of course not. If we want to win, we must do a great deal more. We must lead the peasants' struggle for land and distribute the land to them, heighten their labor enthusiasm, and increase agricultural production, safeguard the interests of the workers, establish cooperatives, develop trade with outside areas, and solve the problems facing the masses, food, shelter and clothing, fuel, rice, cooking oil and salt, sickness and hygiene, and marriage. In short, all the practical problems in the masses' everyday life should claim our attention. If we attend to these problems, solve them, and satisfy the needs of the masses, we shall really become organizers of the well-being of the masses and they will truly rally around us and give us their warm support. Comrades, will we then be able to arouse them to take part in the Revolutionary War? Yes, indeed we will. Here is the kind of thing we have found among some of our cadres. They talk only about expanding the Red Army, enlarging the Transport Corps, collecting the land tax, and selling bonds. As for other matters, they neither discuss nor attend to them, and even ignore them altogether. For instance, there was a time when the Dingchao municipal government concerned itself only with the expansion of the Red Army and with mobilization for the Transport Corps and paid not the slightest attention to the well-being of the masses. The problems facing the people of Dingchao City were that they had no firewood, no salt was on sale because the capitalists were hoarding it, some people had no houses to live in, and rice was both scarce and dear. Comment expensive. These were practical problems for the masses of people of Dingchao and they eagerly looked to us for help in solving them. But the Dingchao municipal government didn't discuss any of these matters. That's why, when the new workers and peasants' representative council was elected in the city, a hundred or more representatives were unwilling to attend after the first few council meetings had discussed only the expansion of the Red Army and mobilization for the Transport Corps, entirely ignoring the well-being of the masses, so that the council was unable to go on meeting. The result was that very little was achieved in regard to the expansion of the Red Army and mobilization for the Transport Corps. That was one kind of situation. Comrades, you have probably read the pamphlets given you about two model townships. There the situation is entirely different. What a great number of people have joined the Red Army from Chang Kong Township in Kiangxi and Chai Shi Township in Fukien. In Chang Kong, 80% of the young men and women have joined the Red Army and in Shaixi, the figure is 88%. There's been a big sale of bonds, too, 
and 4,500 yuan worth have been sold in Changkang, which has a population of 1,500. Much has also been done in other fields. What accounts for this? A few examples will make the point clear. In Changkang, when fire broke out in a poor peasant's house, destroying one and a half rooms, the township government appealed to the masses to contribute money to help him. In another instance, three persons were starving, so the township government and the Mutual Aid Society immediately gave them rice. During the food shortage last summer, the township government obtained rice from Kunglue County, more than 200 li away, for the relief of the masses. Excellent work was done along these lines in Shaisi as well. Such township governments are really models. They're absolutely different from the Dingchao municipal government with its bureaucratic methods of leadership. We should learn from Changkang and Shaixi townships and oppose bureaucratic leaders like those in Dingchao City. I earnestly suggest to this Congress that we pay close attention to the well-being of the masses, from the problems of land and labor to those of fuel, rice, cooking oil, and salt. The women want to learn plowing and harrowing. Whom can we get to teach them? The children want to go to school. Have we set up primary schools? The wooden bridge over there is too narrow, and people may fall off. Shouldn't we repair it? Many people suffer from boils and other ailments. What are we going to do about it? All such problems concerning the well-being of the masses should be placed on our agenda. We should discuss them, adopt and carry out decisions, and check up on the results. We should convince the masses that we represent their interests, that our lives are intimately bound up with theirs. We should help them to proceed from these things to an understanding of the higher tasks which we have put forward, the tasks of the Revolutionary War, so that they will support the revolution and spread it throughout the country, respond to our political appeals, and fight to the end for victory in the revolution. The masses in Chiang Kong say, the Communist Party is really good, it's thought of everything on our behalf. The comrades in Chiang Kong Township are an example to all of us. What admirable people. They have won the genuine affection of the broad masses, who support their call for war mobilization. Do we want to win the support of the masses? Do we want them to devote their strength to the front? If so, we must be with them, arouse their enthusiasm and initiative, be concerned with their well-being, work earnestly and sincerely in their interests, and solve all their problems of production and everyday life, the problems of salt, rice, housing, clothing, childbirth, etc. If we do so, the masses will surely support us and regard the revolution as their most glorious banner, as their very life. In the event of a Kuomintang attack on the red areas, they will fight the Kuomintang to the death. There can be no doubt about this, for is it not a plain fact that we have smashed the enemy's first, second, third, and fourth encirclement and suppression campaigns? The Kuomintang is now pursuing a policy of blockhouse warfare. There's a footnote there. The building of blockhouses around the red areas was decided upon by Chiang Kai-shek at his military conference held at Lushan, Kiangxi province, in July 1933, as a new military tactic for his fifth encirclement and suppression campaign. By the end of January 1934, an estimated total of 2,900 blockhouses had been built in Kiangxi province. The Japanese aggressors later adopted the same tactic against the 8th route and the new 4th armies. Experience fully proved that the counter-revolutionary tactic of using blockhouses could be completely foiled and defeated by adhering to Comrade Mao Zedong's strategy of people's war. Back to the text. Feverishly constructing their tortoise shells as though they were iron bastions. Comrades, are they really iron bastions? Not in the least. Think of the palaces of the feudal emperors over thousands of years. Were they not powerful with their walls and moats? Yet they crumbled, one after another, the moment the masses arose. The Tsar of Russia was one of the world's most ferocious rulers, yet when the proletariat and the peasantry rose in revolution, was there anything left of him? No, nothing. His bastions of iron? They all crumbled. Comrades, what is a true bastion of iron? It's the masses, the millions upon millions of people who genuinely and sincerely support the revolution. That is the real iron bastion, which no force can smash, no force whatsoever. The counter-revolution cannot smash us. On the contrary, we shall smash it. Rallying millions upon millions of people round the revolutionary government 
and expanding our revolutionary war, we shall wipe out all counter-revolution and take over the whole of China. The second question concerns our methods of work. We are the leaders and organizers of the revolutionary war, as well as the leaders and organizers of the life of the masses. To organize the revolutionary war and to improve the life of the masses are our two major tasks. In this respect, we're faced with the serious problem of methods of work. It's not enough to set tasks. We must also solve the problem of the methods for carrying them out. If our task is to cross a river, we cannot cross it without a bridge or a boat. Unless the bridge or boat problem is solved, it's idle to speak of crossing the river. Unless the problem of method is solved, talk about the task is useless. Unless we pay attention to giving leadership to the work of expanding the Red Army and devote particular care to our methods, we will never succeed even though we recite the phrase, expand the Red Army, a thousand times. Nor can we accomplish our tasks in any other field, for instance, in checking up on land distribution, or in economic construction, or culture and education, or our work in the new areas and the outlying districts, if all we do is to set the tasks without attending to the methods of carrying them out, without combating bureaucratic methods of work and adopting practical and concrete ones, and without discarding commandist methods and adopting the method of patient persuasion. The comrades in Xinquo have done first-rate work and deserve our praise as model workers. Similarly, the comrades in northeastern Kiangxi have done good work and are also model workers. By linking the problem of the well-being of the masses with that of the Revolutionary War, the comrades in both these places are simultaneously solving the problems of revolutionary methods of work and of accomplishing their revolutionary tasks. They're working conscientiously, solving problems with minute care and shouldering their revolutionary responsibilities in earnest. They're good organizers and leaders, both of revolutionary war and of the well-being of the masses. Elsewhere, too, the comrades have made progress in their work and deserve our praise, as in some parts of the counties of Shanghang, Changding, and Yongding in Fukien province, in Shikyong, and other places in southeastern Kiangxi province, in some parts of the counties of Chaling, Yangshin, and Qian in the Hunan-Kiangxi border area, in some parts of Yangshin County in the hunan hupe kiangxi border area, in districts and townships of many other counties in Kiangxi province, and in the county of Juichin, which is directly under our central government. In all the places under our leadership, there are undoubtedly many active cadres, excellent comrades, who have sprung from the masses. These comrades have a responsibility to help in places where our work is weak and to help comrades who are not yet able to work well. We're in the midst of a great revolutionary war. We must break through the enemy's large-scale encirclement and suppression and spread the revolution to all parts of the country. All revolutionary cadres have a tremendous responsibility. After this Congress, we must adopt effective measures to improve our work. The advanced areas should become even more advanced and the backward areas should catch up with the advanced. We must create thousands of townships like Chang Kong and scores of counties like Xin Kuo. They will be our strongholds. From these strongholds, we should go forth to smash the enemy's encirclement and suppression campaigns and overthrow the rule of imperialism and the Kuomintang throughout the country. And that's the end of the audiobook. So... I don't really have too many comments other than good idea. Um, this makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, I'm in fact somewhat surprised to read that, you know, at one point it didn't occur to them <laughs> to, you know, do this. Mao had to kind of point this out. Uh, why would you give all your attention just to the military uh, while neglecting the people? Seems like a very obvious way to lose support. Anyway, I'm glad that he did this and that the communists were eventually victorious. Anyway, what do you think? Leave a comment below. We will continue the discussion there as always. And in the meantime, thanks for listening. Thanks also to the current patrons whose names are on the screen. If you'd like to get your name on the screen, head to patreon.com slash socialism for all. You can sign up for as little as $2 a month. And every donation is encouraging as well as materially helpful. So thanks for those. If you'd like to help out without making a donation, liking, subscribing, clicking the notification bell, leaving a comment, even if it's just good video. All those help to boost the channel, as well as sharing it on your social media. That's also very helpful. 
All these things help to bring in more people into this discussion and educational work. And we need to do this in the current climate as capitalism continues to have crises. Ultimately, whatever you're doing to help the cause of socialism, whether it has anything to do with this channel or not, thanks for doing it. Join an organization if there's a good one in your area because organization is key. Or if there's a project that you've had in mind for a while and you have some comrades maybe to help you out with it, go ahead and do it because we're in 2021, about to go into 2022. We should make the most of the time that we have before the shit completely hits the fan. Things are not great now, but they definitely could get worse, so let's take advantage of what we've got and use the resources we have. Anyway, thanks again, and we'll catch you in the next video.